What if you could do all the components in a kit that you make on a single machine? Well, we're going to be talking to Anton today about making exactly that. Keep watching to find out how. Anton, you've got a really cool looking part there, but what does it actually go into? This goes on the top of a motorcycle shock absorber. Okay, fascinating. So, shock absorber, you make um, more components or is it just this one? We make up to 40 components for a particular shock absorber. 40 components, they yeah. all go in one all assembly? All go in one assembly, yeah. Wow, that's amazing. And is this something you make a lot of? We make uh, two, 3,000 of these easily. Wow, yeah. every, every year? Every Decade? year, <laughs> I would say. Every yeah. year, probably more than that, 5,000 a year. Wow, that's a lot of components. Yeah. So I guess it's important that the machine that you're making them on needs to run quite a lot. Yes. Uh, we're in front of a Nakamura AS200L uh, here, um, and we have a bar feeder on it. Is that why you're making it on this machine? It is indeed, yeah. Okay, yeah. So automation. Automation is useful. But if you look at the component here, there's some turn features, but there is a hell of a lot of another kind of feature, isn't there? Yes, um, coming from a turning background, um, having to learn to mill on a turning machine with live tooling uh, was a big step up for me. But yeah, if the viewers are watching this, they might consider actually what would they what would normally traditionally you do with this kind of component? Normally, it would just be a turn part from from a different machine um, over to the the milling section, um, where it'd be a, 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 probably another two stroke three ops. Yeah, and those extra operations. I mean, what the knock-on effects on trying to make three thousand parts a year. Yeah. You're increasing the number of operations in that part. Yes, yeah, very much so. Um, what what yeah. are the knock-on effects? Uh, the knock-on effects of that really are uh, we're gaining time on our milling section, which is very busy. Uh, we're, we're able to do more milling on the on the turning machines or the, 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 the live tooling machines, uh, freeing up time for the mills to do other work that we've got. Absolutely. So looking at the features exactly, we've got kind of a pocket, we've got kind of probably a big, yeah, big drill. Yeah. Does this need to be bored as well for the uh, top yeah, of the, uh, uh, that, the shock that, of the That would be a, probably a 16 mil or end mil uh, to rough and finish, uh, a small end mill to, to, to rough and finish that. Obviously, various drills and taps around the outside. There's a lot of tools you need to yes, make this part. Very much so. People would maybe consider that on a, on a lathe with live tooling, it's always a bit of an afterthought. You might have two, three um, drills and end mills available for milling operations, but you need a lot of tools and you can do them all on a single Nakamura. Yeah, uh, 15 stations on this Nakamura, so uh, plenty, plenty of room. Yeah, exactly. And even a 16 mil mill is quite a big mill. Yes, it is indeed. In yeah, 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 yeah. But they, uh, they, they come with obviously decent live tooling. You can uh, have double-ended tooling, where you've got one tool, one end, one tool, the other, on all 15 stations if you wanted to. So you could, you could actually go up to 30 tools, I suppose you could say. And if you were to tell us um, exactly what the, the effects have been able to do, all of this component in one hit are. I mean, you would have thought that maybe the Nakamura would do good, it's got uh, good turning capability, but maybe the milling would be a little bit of an afterthought, you might have slightly longer cycle times because you can't, you don't have the, the power in the spindle. What would you say about that? Well, I wouldn't, I'm gonna disagree with you on this, Ralph, and I would <laughs> <Okay>. say. <laughs> I love someone disagreeing with me, I love a challenge. Yeah, yeah I would say perhaps, perhaps ever so slightly longer on the cycle time, but this Nakamura, yeah, fine. Uh, copes with this, no problem, no no issues at all. I love it, 3,000 of these components, if I can take that yeah, off yeah, you, 3,000 yeah. of these components, that, uh, a year, I was going to say a day then, a year, <laughs> um, all bar fed, all done on a single machine. And yep. I guess you get better tolerances as well. Yes, yeah, yeah. We've heard from Anton how you're making this component in one hit on the machine behind me, the Nakamura. What made you want to pick this machine? We were looking for something that could um, solve a machining problem. We were machining it in three or four ops, and I really wanted to buy something that could do it in one, cut down unnecessary handling, could get errors, um, machining issues, and cool setup time. So. I thought I need a machine that would do that in one. And what was the support like from ETG? Because you've got one machine, but you've not just got one machine, have you? Well, no, we've got three now. So the first one we bought, I went to Mac in um, 2016. I saw an AS200 there on the stand. I'd look at it, I thought, that's a nice looking machine, aesthetically pleasing, and it could do all the things you wanted it to do for this part. So contacted them, they came in, we negotiated. I've one in the shop now, I have one in the shop then, now I've got three. So. They've done the right thing for me. 